Greetings, Marshare, and welcome to episode 201 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to finish up on ceramic pipes and then plan for rubber. Enjoy. So now we have to see, can we actually use this for anything? Well, pipes, that's kind of the whole point. As far as everything else, not yet. What about the ceramic bearings? They do require lubricant. And it only goes into construction bots. <laughs> Level 4 at that. So that's going to be a while. So since those bearings only go into one thing, it's probably not worth putting the bearings on the bus at all. But the powder goes into many things. It goes into those bearings plus all of this. So it's worth being on the bus. And let's just take it down to the end so we can make our pipes. Let's build it the pipes up here since down here we're uh, we don't know how far this is going to expand with other machines it looks like we need to extend the hazard concrete a bit actually we might as well just extend it all the way to the wall here so let's clear out any trees of which there are many and fill in all the water probably want to move this radar out of the way Presumably it was there because that was the perfect spot for it. Eh, kind of, but also kind of not really. Let's see, what do we get with that? Seemingly pretty good. There is kind of a dead spot down here. So let's put a radar in here. There we go. Looking pretty good for now. Let's make our pipes. They're quite easy, so we'll make one machine's worth, and then we'll have a ton of ceramic pipes going into it, and we can have one on each side, at least to make it easy, and we'll put some speed modules in here to try to catch up. It won't completely clear the gap, but it'll help, and it doesn't have to be full speed. As you can see, actually, even this is too much, because we only have 30 per second. So, there's kind of uh, no point in having this many. So let's dial it down here. Actually, let's set this to zero. We'll set this to input. And say we have 30. And we'll probably want to use the matrix solver here. To find out exactly what we need. And actually, that's a lot closer. So, three machines. Let's have them space like this. Ceramic pipe. Ceramic underground. Then two stack inserters going to here. And a stack inserter, although that's for both of them, so I guess we only need the one there. And then input, 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 and input there. Let's just make it a little cleaner, do that. And then we'll have some inserters on the far side here. Just because I don't want the undergrounds to monopolize all of the available pipes. So I'll also put one there and then they'll basically just cycle back and forth when there's a need for both of them. Although let's make these storage chests. Ceramic pipes. All good. And actually probably want to connect these pipes together so they're added together. So there, that should add all of the pipes together from both chests. And let's just say we want, I don't know, a thousand. Seems like a lot, but you also go through pipes pretty fast when you need them, so... And then this one can just be connected to its output. And we'll say undergrounds is, I don't know, 200. And then that should be it. And we need the right kind of modules for everything. Speed, speed, efficiency. And it looks like it's hooked up. So let's see how it works. Looks 
Looks like it's not quite using it all again. Seems good. Well, it's time to remove plastic pipes from our inventory. We'll just set these to zero. And we'll come in here and add ceramic pipes. I guess 100 to infinity ought to work. And get them in here. There we go. Like with the previous pipes, we don't need to replace everything in the entire factory. Because that would just be annoying. But any future builds can make use of them. And I just got rid of all the ones in my inventory, but we can compare them to something that's already been placed. I even think that spacing is not correct, but let's see. I guess it is. So that gives you an idea of the distance difference. It's not insane, but it does help. Fortunately though, they're kind of hard to see on concrete. <laughs> but what can you do? Now that we don't need to make plastic pipes anymore, we can stop producing most of them. I think we still actually need plastic pipes for some items. Let's see. Okay, it only goes into Reverse Factory 3. And we've already built one. So we probably don't need the rest of these. So, it's going to be a lot of random stuff here. Well, for now, let's turn off Personal Logistics. Just have a chest there. So, what do we have here? Well, <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. Because a lot of this got tore out. I wonder, are all these still connected properly? For the most part, still some stuff here that's not needed anymore. We might as well pick it up. I think it might be kind of out of the range of some of the networks. Yeah, it's not out of the range of all of them, but we'll just clean this up a little bit. We'll worry about all these pipes and what actually is needed and not needed at a future time. I really don't want to be pulling up pipes just to find out, well, actually, we needed this one. And since we don't need this space for anything right now, I don't mind it being taken up by pipes that are perhaps not in the cleanest location. Well, we need a uh, logistics on to get rid of all this junk. then we don't need any of this. And here they come to help. Actually, one thing we can do is switch all these to provider chests. So that way, when we pick stuff up, it shouldn't just plop them back down again. And really, this is the best place for plastic bars, actually. It is right here, and it's... Oh, uh, we disconnected the power. It's just a little far away here, but let's... Plop this in there. I wonder... Yeah, it might be kind of annoying for them to have to bridge that gap, but I think they can. But let's turn it into a storage warehouse, because this is the origin point of plastic, so... It makes sense that we would want it to be here. And right now it's kind of filled up really high. I don't think we necessarily need it to be that high. So let's go with 25,000. So the bots are helping a little bit, but I think we've got a lot of plastic just sitting around. And we certainly will when we get rid of all these pipes. Let's do this here, and then set this to... The plastic type pipes, because any of them that find their way into the network are not wanted. So you put them in here, and then they get deconstructed back into plastic bars. We actually have a whole bunch of plastic here that can be sent on its way. Whoa. <laughs> that was loud, but it was right next to us. Alright, looking pretty good. Just have the long process of going through all of this plastic pipe. 
and making plastic and of course nuking our warehouse with the output but eventually it'll get cleared out now we should probably check to make sure there's nothing else uh, in here that hasn't been uh, talked about but it was researched let's see better electric boilers we don't use very many of them so I don't feel like we have to go through our factory just to upgrade a few of them to make them more efficient we'll just uh, worry about future builds and here's the overview of the rubber which we do need to process here before we get into circuits it's a little easier to read when it's all spaced apart here where we need a desert tree in a desert tree seed generator to make seeds and we can get faster output by adding fertilizer to it or faster still by adding nitrogen to it and then if we want to make the actual tree itself we can make it from nothing by using that alienated fertilizer and plant life samples and we do find the trees scattered around and we might actually have some desert trees uh, sitting in a box somewhere kind of forgot where I put them now let's see this is the farming supplies there was a box that was all the way down here is it still here yes so we have puffers in there and some swamp trees and some other type of trees not sure if they're desert trees but we can make desert trees from nothing so even if we can't find them it's not that much of a problem we can just make more as required and then we take the tree seeds and grow them in the trees one important thing to note about the advanced tree cultivation is it makes another tree in a slightly more rubber compared to the amount of trees but it also doesn't require any more seeds so it's a lot more efficient when the seeds are concerned and any existing desert trees can be chopped down into rubber if we wanted to grow them that way so we'll have to see if there's uh, any materials left over because right now we're just burning our extra rubber materials but we can actually send them to get processed properly but we won't know how that works until we try the steel bearings and of course the green circuits the better heat pipes but we don't really need those right now vehicles but we're pretty good on vehicles at this point so I don't think we need to worry about that or any of this military stuff for now certainly in the future if we need to blow up some biters we can look at this laser turrets is the the big one but I don't really think we need the laser turrets either because our ammo is uh, pretty powerful as is so I don't see the need to uh, spend any time researching that stuff and beacons but I'm not much of a beacon guy I know there's a lot of beacon people out there but not really me it'd have to be a pretty hyper optimized thing to need a bunch of beacons the way I look at it considering that a lot of these setups aren't necessarily that big I know this one ended up being kind of big but uh, in the end it's it's not that big so we'll see I, mean, I kind of want to save the beacons for the end game if we are going to use them so I know there might be some people watching they're like oh he's not using beacons that's so annoying but I don't know never really got into them so <laughs> I tend not to think about them when planning different builds so as far as resources that we need we need to think about the fiberglass boards which are pretty easy it's just something new we need to make and then rubber and we probably want to do it both ways we probably want to have one method to get rid of the byproducts from processing gases and then have the trees as a backup in the event we need it because the amount is so small both of those builds will probably be small too so although it's going to be fairly complicated it's probably just going to be a lot of uh one machine going into one machine type of thing then we could use trees but we may want more in the future we certainly can search for rubber and see what it is used for well <laughs> it goes into just wires so what do wires go into yeah I mean it goes into some stuff not very much 
So that's probably kind of a sign we don't have to go nuts with this. Just enough to make it work. We definitely don't need very much for the green circuits here. But let's start a new line. Let's just straight up make the rubber. Although, do we need the liquid rubber for anything? Probably not. Let's just make sure. No. Just rubber. Okay. Well, let's just make this one for now, which is probably way too much, but we'll just see how it works. And it comes from an assembly machine. We'll worry about modules and stuff later, because we had our two different ways of making the rubber. Either through chemicals, or through growing them from trees. Let's do the chemicals version first. I don't think we want to mine this stuff, but we do have extra gas components that we're just burning away, so it would be nice to try to use them if possible. So we have two major components, styrene and butadine. So let's go here and check out what goes into styrene, because now we're really starting to dig into chemicals here. Styrene is made from ethyl benzene, and it is converted using catalysts, the green ones, which we can do. And then ethyl benzene comes from benzene and ethylene and acid. And then benzene could be made from methane or butane. Butane directly, methane with green catalysts. And let's go back here and check for butadine, which is made from naphtha with a catalyst. Although, let's put it in a new line here. So let's check these various components. We need the naphtha, and then we need to check for if we have butane and or methane available as byproducts. Well, it looks like methane is the primary product that we're using here. We are getting rid of ethane and butane. And butane is one of the ways to make one of these chemicals. So we're good there. And ethane is the way to make the other chemical. So at least for this direction, using these two byproducts, we can make use of them rather than just burn them. So that is something. The other location that we are consuming it is down here. And this method is actually trashing all three. Because it's just getting rid of uh, byproducts. And we have our two different ways of making oils. And they are set up individually. And we are making naphtha. So it would be kind of annoying to send it around. But at least it's set up to properly make naphtha. It's not necessarily a byproduct, but we can make it and we will get some of the gases as a result of it. So that's looking pretty good. I know it's kind of uh, a little difficult. You have to double and triple check your chemicals to make sure they're all going to be available, but it is looking good. So with benzene, we can make it from butane and of course, make sure that is one of the things we're burning. And then we're going to need ethane which is also being consumed here. So both of those chemicals could be covered from this area and also from where we're producing the naphtha. And then right here we have our naphtha as an ingredient. We can also uh, use that other methane and turn it into benzene as well. So we probably should. So this is kind of a situation of having basically every option available to us. And looking at these numbers, they're all quite small, especially because we need, you know, like 3% of this output right now. So I think we can play this pretty straightforward and just use one machine into one machine and make it nice and simple. And then we'll worry about getting access to all that stuff later. So we need a couple of random machines here. Let's just uh, do our best to try to follow it. Guess we can just do something right here for now. And we'll put them kind of in a row to try to understand how everything goes into each other. And then we're going to need advanced chemical plants and crackers. 
I don't know if we're making those. Well, there's a steam cracker. I don't recall making them. So, we'll just handcraft them. But we need a chemical plant here. Let's just plop it right there. And then we need to set this to make our liquid rubber, which needs our styrene and butadine. And then another chemical plant. Doesn't really matter, but we'll just do the styrene there, which comes from the ethyl benzene, which is an advanced chemical plant. We don't have any of these on the bus, we'll just handcraft them, but we're not really using too many of them, so it's probably okay to just keep doing this. So that's the ethyl benzene. Let's make sure it's right. Yep, ethyl benzene there. And that's the output there. So it needs ethylene and benzene, which come from steam crackers of their related items. Whenever having a complicated setup like this, I try to just place things down and get an idea of everything that we need first, and then we can go from there. So ethylene and benzene. Ethylene and then benzene and then the inputs go in there and of course they need the steam and we have all these outputs to deal with but One step at a time It's nice when everything's just basically a one-to-one -one ratio or the the rate is so low We just don't care what the ratio is so this makes this a little easier And then if we need to fix it we can throw in speed modules or something like that is kind of the way I'm looking at this here And then we need the butadine Which comes from the naphtha but also the benzene can be made from the methane that we have extras of. And that step should go over here. I think it's a chemical plant. Yes, that one right there. I believe we we'll put this one right here. Naphtha into butadine. And I think that is the chain. I try to place them in order here to kind of show that they're all... Uh, kind of on the same tier. This one's set to plastic. I want that to be rubber. Well, this one should probably go back here. Then begins the long process of hooking all these up in an appealing way. I guess it doesn't matter too much. I want to try to make them look nice. So styrene and butadine. It's kind of hard to tell by just looking at the icons, which is which. Butadine is on the bottom. And these are all uh, direct pipe machines. They're just consuming byproducts, so we want to use as much of it as possible. So we'll just go straight through and put some space in there just so undergrounds can pop in here if they have to. So that one makes the butadine. And then this is a input that we need from somewhere, so let's just kind of put this here as a reminder and also we'll have an output so we'll need that there let's check to see if we can do anything with residual gas directly because I think we are kind of throwing some of it away at this point well we can turn it into synthesis gas and then that gas can be turned into things it might be an unnecessary optimization at this point because we're just not producing very much of it and it's okay to throw away what we have but that's something to put on the back burner. The idea that we can do stuff with all that residual gas. And actually, this is a long chain to make use of these oil residuals that we have on hand. All of these, the 629,000 of them, because we can turn those into residual gas, and then the residual gas can be turned into the synthesis gas, and then that can be converted into other things that we can actually use. But I kind of want to wait until the factory has a shortage of something when we're like, oh no, we have to do more drilling. I'm like, well, not quite yet. We have some options. So that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking there. I think it was a chemical plant that went into this one, right? Because we need to make the styrene. Yes, from ethyl benzene, and that's the output there. And it looks like it's uh, just one input, one output. Actually, one other thing I could do rather than having to constantly search recipes is just have an extra one there as a uh, a thing to copy on. 
so they don't have to worry too much. So then the chain continues because we need our input of styrene and also probably should uh, put a line here just to remind me that catalysts need to be taken care of there. But we need our ethyl benzene, which can come from this. So let's make another chemical plant. And I'm guessing the robots don't reach here because they're not delivering us any steel. Or are they and they're just going from really far away? No, it doesn't seem like it. Steel is on the list, but it's red, which implies that robots don't have access to it. Kind of makes sense because we changed it to where they're all getting dumped here, but they're not actually getting filled up. Well, then there they go. I guess we were just barely out of range of the network. Wow, that's really close to being out. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Well. There. <laughs> Put that up there as our copy target. We need to line this up in a convenient way. Guess it could do this. So that connects and then we have ah, an output there. Then this needs the ethylene and benzene. The benzene has two sources. Ethylene has the one. So which one is ethylene? The one in the middle here. So we can try to line it up with this one. And let's do a copy target. Probably not going to see too much of this actually operating because there's just no uh, chemicals that are going to be available. And that's okay. We're just going to have to set this up for the future here. So that's there. It has its output. This will have an input which will come from somewhere else. And then that has its input as well. Then we have to get rid of these other ones. Not sure which one is more desirable to remove. Well, the more common is probably the butane because it's being burned in both locations. But the methane is only being burned here. So we probably want to focus on this method of the two. So there'll be a pipe coming up. I think we can put these right next to each other, but let's just leave a space so it's easier to walk around. So that input comes from somewhere else. The output would go in there. Then we'd have another way to do it up here. And it also needs some catalysts. I think we're done with these now. And we'll want some kind of tank in here with some logic set up. But actually, let's put it right here with a pump. And always got to double, triple check that the uh, gases we're working with are correct here. Uh, we're dealing with benzene. So if the benzene is less than like 20% of the tank, which is 4,000, it turns on just to put enough in there. So that way we have focus on this method. And also more pipes, but we're starting to see all the pipes positions and that allows us to start connecting things in clean ways. Well, we're going to need some steam for all this. I guess the good question is how much steam. We haven't really done any concerns with this uh, rate here, but let's just see if one machine can supply that amount of steam. And I'm not sure if we can find it on here. Well, it looks like we can. Yeah, but the numbers look kind of weird. We don't necessarily need to put it in there. We just need to calculate it. So 52.5 with our better boiler. Well, this thing would put out 40 steam every second, but it runs at 1.5 speed. And it looks like it takes a module too. 
Well, you can just put a speed module in there, I guess. Although, putting in an efficiency module is actually pretty insane because we're making energy from less energy. <laughs> that seems pretty good, right? So I think that'll work. It would be nice, though, if it uh, fit in here. But let's see. Let's see if we can get it to line up because it just uh, doesn't because it has a certain temperature to it. But these recipes don't have that baked in. Hopefully it connects. I think it does. Because, I mean, we're using boilers right here. And clearly, they work for the purpose of cracking because all this stuff is operating, so... Seems fine. And, uh, actually... Also, I noticed that we're low on the residual gas, so we're not just dumping it. We are actually using it for stuff, so... We have somewhere to put it, that it'll get used. Okay, we have a bunch of steam now. <laughs> We're gonna have to connect. So that can go through there. And hey, why not just put it right there? Although, it might work a little better in a different location. Because we can just use one of our water pump jacks here. And it has to be from this side right here. I mean, it'd probably be fine, but it might look a little weird. I don't really want to move that, but... Put that there. Make our steam. Just trying to make it reasonably compact here. There we go. So the three different gases that we might have are all input there. The naphtha, which will have to come in from somewhere. The residual gas, which will go out. Hydrofluoric acid, which will come in. And the hydrogen fluoride gas that'll go out. So, is hydrogen fluoride being processed? Could just vent it, I suppose, but I always try to use stuff if possible. I believe it's going in here. Can't really tell, because there's nothing in there, but... Because it's hydrofluoric acid. Yeah, hydrogen fluoride gas goes into that. So, we can uh, use it up there. We'll just have to have a drone sending it down. Or... Plus, I really don't want to have pipes for all these items going all over the place, or trains, because the production rate is so small, it's almost not even really worth it. Okay. Well, we have two different catalysts that need to be made, and they're both the green kind. So, it would be kind of nice if we can do both of them with one machine. That might be wishful thinking, but I think it can work. Because these numbers are super small. Let's see. It can go in, like right here. And then out, like right there. Something like that. And then we will just need to deliver the actual ores. And it kind of depends on how exactly this is placed, but just to remind us that ores need to go in there. And I'm pretty sure we already have all of these on a network here. Yeah, I think this is the specific one that's meant for that, because it does both. Because we do this process other places. Okay. And we don't have to use this pump jack if this is right next to water somewhere. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to build the setup and see how it works. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.